Okay guys, so here's the deal. It's a 2015 Viper and uh, I took it out in the trails for the first ride of the year and uh, I got about an hour in and I could hardly turn the thing. Uh, steering seized right up on it. I had no idea what it was. It took literally took two hands to turn it and uh, almost had a tree. It was a mess. So I googled it, went back to the cottage, googled it, YouTube did it, looking for answers and I couldn't find anything that suggested what it was. We checked the outside, all the tie rod ends, ball joints on the outside and nothing. Everything was loose on this end. It was something inside. So we ripped it apart in the trailer the best we could. And there's a pivot shaft at the bottom of the uh, steering column. And that's what we found it, it was seized. So on the trail, we were able to work it loose. We couldn't get that out. There's a aluminum bracket in there that's pop riveted. So we couldn't take that out on the trail. So uh, we loosened it the best we could worked it back and forth, sprayed some WD-40 in, got some fluid film on it, and it was enough to get us through the trip. Uh, back home now, and I'm going to attempt, attempt to put a grease cert into that steering pivot shaft. Um, I don't know, but I got to get that aluminum bracket off to drive that shaft out. I'm probably going to clean up that pivot shaft also because it's all corroded. Uh, get that cleaned up and put it back in, hopefully it solves the issue. Um, I'm not a YouTube star, this is my first video. Don't make fun of me, I'm not a technician. I'm just a guy that uh, has some tools and some in ambition and uh, I wanna fix it. And I'm kinda cheap too, so I'm not bringing it to a dealership for this one, I think I can figure it out. Okay guys, stay tuned, I'll do my best. Don't rip me too hard in the comments. Okay, it's up on the lift, I just about killed myself getting that thing up there. Anyway, the panels are easy to come off. There's just those clips there. They come off and that uh, hood, there's lots of videos on uh, how to get that hood off, but uh, I'm gonna pop that hood off and uh, show what's next. Okay, panels are off now. I think there's screw there, Torx head, one underneath, and I think two on the front. Uh, just pull them off. Okay, here we are to this point, pretty uneventful. Uh, this plug is the main plug that it undoes. It's pretty simple to get at. Uh, and there was only two, three, four, five, six, I believe, Torx head screws to get that uh, hood off. So now uh, we got to take that air breather off, uh, the boots that go into the intakes, and like I said on the trails, we just loosen that uh, uh, rad. I'll see if I take it off or not, and then I got to take off these rubber boots that, so you can see inside. Okay, uh, just because I'm in the shop and I've it's. Easier to do now. I didn't do this on the trail, but uh, undid, took the rad hose off so I could flip the rad back. And also the uh, overflow, coolant overflow, is uh, just a couple bolts on the bottom, Torx heads, and undid that and then get that out of the way also. Okay, so now it's time to take off these rubber boots. There's one on each side. And these are all pins. What I find is a pair of needle nose underneath the bottom, or not needle nose, but side cutters on the bottom light pressure just pop them out underneath again pop them out pop them out and then uh, once they're out that just will come right out sorry there was uh, also a cover here for Torx heads again that came off the bottom that has to come off okay everything's ripped off so we can see into the belly of the beast Let's see if we can get up there now a light for you. That down there is the issue. So there's one, two, three uh, uh, Torx heads got to come off. Undo those tie rod ends connecting to the steering shaft. There's like, I think it's 15 or 17 millimeter nut on the end of the steering shaft. And that will remove that piece there. But see that piece of aluminum frame. I believe that's going to have to come off. That was what was stopping on the trail. I couldn't get that right out. So... I'm going to take off those three pieces now. There are three bolts. Okay, what I didn't explain, I forgot, is that uh, those there's nuts on the bottom of those uh, bolts, those Torx-headed bolts. And this was what we needed two people on the trail to do because someone had to um, hold onto the nuts down on the bottom here because you can see the nuts hang, just see them there. There's the nut. you got to be able to hold onto those because it'll just spin as you put a socket on. Let me see if I can get there. There, that's better. You can see uh, the nuts. Okay, this job is just growing and growing. Uh, now I gotta get that front end apart to get a piece of that frame to get that, uh, uh, whatever that pivot 
part is called down there. See that uh, aluminum piece there? It's got to come out because I can't lift that out. So I got to start ripping the frame out or the front of the sled. So I'm just taking off the uh, bumper and then there's a whole plastic shroud there and we'll see what that exposes. Probably end up taking that rad right out. Okay, this is all trial and error, but I've got the rad out and now I think I got to take this plastic shroud out. So there's there was two bolts, two Torx head bolts on there and two more up on the top and that should pull that out. Well, that was a bugger. There was a bolt that went in there that hooked onto the bottom of this cover and it was rusted. And uh, I thought I was gonna break it, get it out, but a little WD-40 and worked it slow back and forth, but finally, eventually it came. So now that's out of the way. Deeper we go. Okay, I'm venturing into areas I'm not, not a lot of experience in, but I'm gonna after today is uh, to get that uh, aluminum plate out there, it looks like there's three, seven, eight, nine, ten rivets. So it's riveted in. So you can see I took one out with the drill. So this would be experimentation, but I gotta take those rivets out and then there's a bolt on the bottom of the steering shaft that's gonna have to come off and hopefully, hopefully, that should get that uh, aluminum piece out of it. Oh my goodness, what a job. Well, I don't know if you can see here. What I ended up doing is I uh, drilled out those rivets. And I don't know if you can see in there, at the bottom of that steering shaft, uh, I don't know if you can see it there. There it is there. That uh, nut in there, the bolt, see at the bottom of the shaft. There's a 15 millimeter bolt that you have to get on the bottom, a nut that you have to get on the bottom. So you put the, the, the uh, socket up through here but then you have to hold on the back of it, it's like a swivel, and you can fit another 15 millimeter wrench on the back to hold it from spinning. And then once you get that undone, you have to go back to the top of the steering shaft, undo those two bolts, pull off the collar, and then that'll lift the whole steering shaft up. And then I drove out the uh, um, uh, pop rivets, and I think this is pretty much loose now, yeah. And here it is. My goodness, there it is. All that freaking work for that. But what that does now is it allows me to undo that bottom piece in here. I can undo that now, the cover, and then drive that pivot pin up and out. You see it's all coated with goop from when we we're on the trail and I just got lubricated so I could use it, get back home. Okay, next step. Okay, hopefully I can uh, explain this best I can. Take this bag off so you can see it. Um, there's a bushing, one at the top. I think my finger's going there. Bushing from the top and a bushing from the bottom. And there's about, it feels like maybe a quarter of an inch between the bushings where they meet. So what I did is this hole right here that you can see, I uh, drilled a hole through there. That should allow me to tap a thread in there for that uh, quarter inch greaser. And where I drilled it through comes right between those bushings in that quarter inch gap. And hopefully I'll get that tapped in there and that greaser will be accessible from the outside. Okay, there's the uh, greaser I just put on it. I hope that when I get all this back together again that nothing's going to interfere with that. But uh, I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on it and uh, that should work. Okay, I'm just uh, buttoning everything back up and I had to do a little change with my greaser. I don't know if you can see in there. I get the light. There's the greaser. I did have an angled one angled down. I thought that would work, but I, I couldn't, I didn't realize this plastic was gonna be in the way. So I put a straight zert on it and uh, had to cut a little bit of the plastic out of there. But now it's not opportune because I'm gonna have to take the hood off to access that greaser. But I guess in the end, at least there is a greaser that you can access. Um, just great peace of mind if you're out in the bush that you know that uh, you're not gonna have problems with your se steering seizing up. So that's where I'm at. Well, well it's done. Well, let me tell you, uh, I made this video not because I wanna be a YouTube star or anything like that, but I, I did it because I had a problem with it. And like everybody else, I Googled it, I YouTubed it, and I couldn't find anything on it. 
And uh, so hopefully this video, although it's not done professionally, hopefully it'll, it'll help somebody else out there that comes across a similar problem. Because I can't believe between these uh, Vipers and Articat frames that uh, there are other people having issues like this. So the heart of it was that uh, pivot pivot shaft. I, I don't even know what it's called. Uh, pivot shaft at the bottom of the steering arm. And uh, it was impossible to get out. You can see in the video I take out that aluminum shaft or that aluminum plate. And once I got it out, I was able to drive that shaft out and loop it all up. I put some... Um, Oh my God, to get old. Anyway, that grease, synthetic grease. That's what I was trying to think of. I put that synthetic synthetic grease on there so it doesn't freeze up. And I put the uh, grease cert on it. And although you got to take off the shroud here to get to it, just, it's just underneath here, at least you can get to it and grease it. Once a season probably is plenty enough to keep it. So you, just peace of mind so you're out in the trails and the thing's not going to seize up. So am I going to keep this sled? I don't know. Um, I'm looking seriously at uh, going to a two-stroke. I love the reliability of that four-stroke engine, the power. It's smooth, uh, but it's heavy. And if you're looking for a sled that's going to last a long time, I got about, um, I think, close to 15,000 kilometers on it, and it runs beautiful. That There's not an issue with it at all. That C steering was the first problem I have, had with it at all. <clears throat> so it's been a good sled. Um... I, I just, I'd like to try out a, a two-stroke. I'm not, I haven't been snowmobiling a long time. I'm fairly new to it. This was my first real sled I had, and it's been great on the trails. But every once in a while, it's just nice to get into some uh, deeper powder and, and maybe have some fun. And you're not going into any deep powder with this unless you get a strong back. And I've pushed this thing out too many times. So I hope this video helped you out. Um, like I said, I couldn't find a video on it. Maybe there is one out there, but I couldn't find one on it. And uh, hopefully it helps someone else that's in a similar situation. Okay? Cheers, my friends.